So end behavior is something that you touch on in Algebra 2. And then um, we're going to do it again here, but we're going to do it with um, using calculus notation. Okay. So end behavior is this. So far, we've been concentrating on, you know, values close to the origin. X equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and like maybe like the farthest we'll go is like X equals 10 or negative 10, right? But what if we ventured past that? What if we ventured here past X equals 10, past X equals 100? You know that this x-axis extends forever out of this room into the parking lot and further down the street, right, into space. So if I were to ride along this x-axis out into infinity while keeping my eye on the graph of the function, end behavior is vertically, where is the graph going, right? So if I were here and if I were to go to positive infinity, in what direction is the graph going vertically? It's going down to negative infinity. So I say, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x, which is y, approaches negative infinity. And in algebra 2, you wrote, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. That's fine, but that's not concise enough for calculus. In calculus, we have another notation. It's a limit. So in algebra 2, this is how we write it. In calculus, we say the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is negative infinity. So these two give you the same information. In both cases, you have as x approaches infinity, and then you have f of x approaches negative infinity. Now, because x approaches infinity, positive infinity, on the right-hand side, we call this the right end behavior. So if I were to ask you for the right end behavior, there is no ambiguity. It's not, hey, what could this mean? It only means one thing. And that one thing is, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity? And you would say it is in, uh, negative infinity. All right? Now, if I were to go in the opposite direction, if I were to ride the x-axis into negative infinity, in what direction is the graph going? Up to positive infinity, right? So I say the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is positive infinity. And I call that the left-hand behavior because it happens on the left-hand side. And so when I ask you for the left end behavior, you say the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is positive infinity. Okay? Now, this is one possibility where it goes up and down to the infinities. Other possibilities might include, so possibilities... for end behavior, right? f of x could go to positive infinity. f of x could go to negative infinity. Or f of x could flatten out at a specific value, right? So when you see the graph going up, that's going to positive infinity. When your graph going down, when your graph is going down, it's going to negative infinity. Or when it's flattening out, 
All right, so let's say it flattens out like this. Do you see how the graph is just getting flatter towards the end? It's flatlining. Then it's approaching a specific value. So we say, you know, f of x approaches, like if this is y equals 3, f of x approaches 3. Okay? All right, let's do some examples. So take a look at this first one. What I'm looking for is, as I am writing along the x-axis out to positive infinity, what trend does my function have in terms of like its vertical position? So as I ride out along that way, what is the graph doing? Look, if you trace the graph with your finger, it looks like it's flattening out at y equals zero, right? Here, if you trace this out, it looks like it's flattening out at y equals zero. So I say the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is infinity. I'm sorry, it's not. It's zero. I'm so sorry. Because it's flattening out at zero. On this side, look, as I follow the graph, as x approaches positive infinity, the graph is flattening out at zero again. So I say the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is zero. All right, question? Yeah. Um, if it was like the limit um, of f of x as x is approaching, like negative one right but if it said negative one then that's not end behavior right then we're not talking about end behavior when I ask you for end behavior that means as X approaches infinity not X approaches one okay so you're not looking for as X approaches one but if it was like as X like negative one because then the graph would uh -huh. be down well, as x approaches negative 1, from one side it's going down, from another side it's going up. Right? So that would be D and E. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, let's move on uh, to the next one for end behavior. So again, end behavior, it's the limit of f of x as x... Right, because, again, we're talking about end behavior, which means only look at what the graph is doing as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. What long. happens here is not included in my end behavior. Okay. Um, so here, the limit as x approaches positive infinity, as x approaches positive infinity, what is the graph of y doing? Where is it going vertically? It's going to positive infinity. And the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity, where is it going as you go to the further and further to the left? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Okay? So that is the end behavior for that function. Okay. So here... It says use your graphing calculator to graph each function. Now, before we graph this one, okay, I want to ask you, so we have to describe the end behavior and zeros and also any points of discontinuity. All right, so before we even graph this one, look at f of x here. What type of function is that? Starts with a b. That's a polynomial function. What do we know about the domain for all polynomial functions? It's what? It's all real numbers. That means, are there any discontinuities? No. no. So already, right, you should know that because this is a polynomial function, there are no discontinuities. Could you graph it and check? Of course you could, right? But it's important for you to know, right? So that, you know, if you graphed it incorrectly, you could catch yourself, it saves you time, and so on. All right, so now go ahead and 
take out your calculators and graph that one. So when we graph, here is what we get, correct? Okay, now we have to look at the end behavior of this. So what happens as x approaches positive infinity? infinity. It goes to positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, it goes to negative infinity. Okay, zeros. Yeah, can you please go ahead and find the zeros of this? So I'll remind you once. It's menu, analyze graph, zero. Now you go to whichever point you want. I'm going to do the leftmost point here. Okay, this is very important because when I've been helping you guys out at like bonus or what I've been working with students, I've noticed that sometimes for lower bounds, students are going to the right and it doesn't work and you're going backwards. That doesn't work. There are cases where that'll get you into trouble. For lower bound, it has to be to the left of the point you're looking for, right? You click there and then you drag towards the right. So that's negative 2 comma 0. So here we're going to write f of 2 equals 0. All right, go ahead and find the other two, please. Right, so there is one there. There is one at negative 2. There is one at 2 and 1. Okay, this was using a calculator, and it's a very basic function. Question? No. Okay. Um, now... On your quiz, you're not, it's going to be all no calculator. So now what if this was on the quiz and you had to find the zeros and you had to find the end behavior, right? So here's how we're going to do that. Algebraically, zeros, okay? You take the function and set it equal to zero f of x equal to 0. So that's x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4 equal to 0. How do we factor this? By grouping. So I factor out an x squared from the left, I get x minus 1. Factor out minus 4 from the right, and I get x minus 1. Now I have x squared minus 4, x minus 1. Factor that guy some more, x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 1. And look at that. I have x equals 2, negative 2, and 1. Okay? So same as what I got over there. All right, so now you're saying, fine, how about end behavior? Well, end behavior too, you did it in algebra two, right? And in algebra two, we told you that if you had a polynomial function, as x approaches infinity, the only term that makes a difference is which one? When x gets really, really big, which one's the only one that makes a difference? the highest degree. Remember this from Algebra 2? So, you take the term with the highest degree. So now I have y equals, or f of x equals x cubed, right? Okay. Now, I need the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity. Okay. For the negative infinity, all I do is plug in a negative number into x cubed, like negative 1 cubed. Will that give me a positive or negative result? Negative. So I say negative infinity. For this, positive infinity, I plug a positive number into x cubed. 1. 1 cubed. Will that give me a positive or negative value? Positive. So look, there's the end behavior algebraically. Okay? All right. Let's graph the next one. 
Go ahead and plug the next one into your calculator and go. All right, so x cubed. I didn't need parentheses there, but it's okay. All right, here we go. Um, so let's just analyze this for a minute. Looking at this function, do I know that there is a discontinuity at x equals 0? Yes, why? Because x is equal to 0. And now, do I know... Um, x is 0, so there is a discontinuity. Do I know if it is a, what type of discontinuity it is? If it's removable or jump or infinite? Can it be jump? It's not jump. If it, so it's either going to be removable or infinite. How do I know it's infinite? Because the x doesn't cancel with anything from the numerator, right? Okay, so there is a, um, I'm sorry, an infinite discontinuity at x equals 0. And look, if I look at the graph, it um, confirms what I'm saying. Okay. Right end behavior, left end behavior. So if you look at the graph, where is the y value going as you go further and further to the right? To the right, is it going to make, it's going to zero, right? It's flattening out to zero. And how about to the left? Yeah. Zero again. But it didn't equal zero. Right, and this is a limit, so it never equals the value oh, okay. anyway, right? It approaches that value. Okay, the zeros, go ahead and find the zeros for me. There are two. So here's what I'm going to do. This side of the room here, please find the zero on the left. And this side of the room, please find the zero on the right. With the calculator? With the calculator, yeah. Um, we say f of negative 4.19 is equal to 0, f of 1.19 is equal to 0. Okay, so how would we do some of this algebraically? Um, how would I do the end behavior algebraically? I take the highest power on the top and put it over the highest power in the denominator, right? So that's, yeah, x squared over x cubed. That turns into 1 over x, right? And what happens to that as x gets very, very large? It goes to what? 1 over, like 1 over a million, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to 0, okay? So that approaches zero, all right? So that's your end behavior. So think about it. You have one pizza. You're going to divide it between two people. Everybody gets half a pizza. Now you have that one pizza. Now you're going to divide it between four people. Everybody gets less. Now your group gets bigger, 10 people. Now you only get one-tenth of a pizza. Now, you're gonna, now your group gets bigger, okay? There is like more people in the lockdown that come to your room. Now you have 100 people in this room that you have to get pizza to. Now imagine it's a million people that you're dividing the pizza among, right? Everybody gets a tiny little, like, speck. Okay. All right, here we go. Continuity. Determine the value of A so that F is continuous. Okay. Before I even start this problem, put a star next to this problem. Because you're going to see this problem over and over again right into calculus. Okay, this is real stuff now. Okay, what type of function is this? It starts with a p again. Not a polynomial, but a piecewise, right? This is a piecewise function. They're each polynomial functions in their rank, but it's a piecewise function altogether. Okay, what does it mean for a piecewise function to be continuous? So let's take a look. The partition here happens at x equals 2, 1, 2 right? What's the function to the left? It's x squared plus 1. What if I wanted to graph that one, right? 
At x equals 2, what's the value of that one? Here, what's the value of this at x equals 2? 5. No. Um, so at x equals 2, I put that in there, oh. it's 5. And so if I were to graph but that one, right, but remember at the boundary, we always put in, so I'm sorry, so it should be an open circle. All right? And then it's x squared plus 1. That's a parabola with a vertical shift of 1. So does that look like that? Would you say that looked like that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. What's the next one? What's this? What, is, what type of function is that? Is that a parabola? What is It's a linear function, right? So... It could look like a whole bunch of things depending on what A is. But now, so suppose, suppose that function turned out to be graphed and it, would tur it turned out to look like that. Now, is this continuous? No. no. What should happen for it to be continuous? They would, the they would line up at the same point. So if I were to take this, move it up, and line it up at the same point, then it's continuous, right? So, the only thing that matters is not necessarily how they look, but that at this point, the function on the right and the function on the left have the same value, right? So, to be continuous, the function on the left and the function on the right should have equal value. And whenever I say what value, that's y, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the function on the left, okay? At x equals 2, the function on the left, x squared plus 1, is 2 squared plus 1, is 5. Okay? The function on the right, at x equals 2, ax is a times 2, 2a. Okay, so all I did was plug in 2 into the top, 2 into the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is set the two equal to each other. Two a equals five, a equals five over two. Right, you set the numerator equal to zero and you use the quadratic formula. Okay? So if a is 5 over 2, this would become 5 over 2x, right? 5 over 2x. At x equals 2, what's the value? 5. Okay? So this would be 5 over 2x. And then at x equals 2, y equals 5. So it does match. Okay? So this is what you would have to do for this problem. Okay. Questions? Okay. Let's take this last one. A car rental company charges a base fee of $35 to rent a car and then a daily fee of $15. 
write an equation that models the total rental fee as a function of the number of days n. All right, so this is a problem like straight out of Algebra 1, and I know it's kind of even like insulting your intelligence, right? But the point of this is notation, and that's it. Okay, so what would this function look like? It would be what plus what? 35 plus 15n. This is the rental fee. Okay, now here's the deal. As a function of the number of days n. If I want this to be a function of n, then I have to call this f of n. And that's why I have it here. Okay? Now, the next part says, as the number of days increase, what value does the cost approach? So when it says, as the number of days increase, we assume that it says, increase infinitely. Infinitely. Okay? So now, remembering that this is pre-calc honors, we have to write the proper notation. This is the limit of f of n as n approaches infinity. We need proper notation. I know, like, all of you immediately could figure out what the answer here is. But again, it's not all about the answer. It's about the process. And so this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity... 35 plus 15n, and that's how much? How much is the total cost in the end? What does it approach? Infinity, infinity. right? Because if, if like the days you know, approach infinity, then this is going to be infinitely costly, right? So if you rent this car your entire life, you're going to be paying a lot of money, right? Okay. So, this homework will be due Tuesday tomorrow. And I have a practice quiz, which is online with solutions already.